Earnings alert. Eli Lilly reporting mixed third quarter results this morning, beating earnings per share, but missing on the revenue line. The pharmaceutical giant raising its full year earnings guidance, however. The stock is up this morning, better than 1% in the pre-market. We want to bring in John Lechleiter, Eli Lilly chairman and CEO. John, good to see you. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Can you tell me what drove the quarter? How would you characterize the last three months? Well, I think on the top line, we missed by a small amount, but uh, we very, were very pleased with the fact that growth uh, came from new products. Uh, our cancer drug, Cyramza, $111 million in the quarter. Our recently launched diabetes drug, Trulicity, $74 million in the, in the quarter. We were hurt a lot by rate. So on a non-GAAP basis, we said minus 4% top line growth. But if you take rate out, we actually grew by 5%. We saw good volume growth in a lot of our geographies. And then I think the other part of the story is the middle of the income statement. We reduced operating expenses by 7%. So, Maria, that gave us 22% non-GAAP EPS growth to $0.89. Cents. And we obviously raised our guidance now to $3.40, $3.45 for the year. So, so how does this all uh, sort of jive with the patent expiration story? I mean, clearly you have been lowering cost. Where are you in that cycle in terms of cost cutting? And, and when you look ahead in terms of the patent expirations to come uh, and what we're looking at in terms of Cymbalta, some of your real important drugs facing patent expiration in the next couple of years. Well, I think you're referring to Cialis. That'll come later in the decade. Cymbalta, the patent for Cymbalta expired in late 2013. That's getting to the point where it's just about washed out of our, of our results. We saw a little bit of residual impact. Recall that in January we said to investors, we aim to resume growth now that we've gotten through most of the, the acute phase of our patent expiration period. We're launching new products. We aim to get back to margins that are more like our historical margins in 2018. You're right, we do have some other patent expirations coming this decade, but we will overcome those uh, with the launch of, of new products. We've got two now under review by the FDA and more filings and hopefully more FDA submissions, uh, FDA decisions plan for the next 18 months. And, and John, when you look at what's to come in the pipeline, obviously an impressive pipeline, but, but what, what are you expecting in terms of the firestorm over pricing? We know this is now a political hot button issue. Pricing of these important drugs, in particular cancer drugs, uh, are coming under fire because they are skyrocketing. What are you expecting in terms of the political heat that your company and industry are, are going to face? Well, I think uh, if you look back on at least a four-year cycle, we see a lot more noise uh, around pricing as we approach uh, the presidential uh, election. You know, I think uh, obviously we aim to, to, to price our products in a way that's commensurate with the value that they bring. It's interesting, Maria, that over many years, the percentage that we spend in health care on medicines has remained about the same, at currently about 12 or 13 percent. And we know that medicines, while you can say, well, this is an expensive medicine, there's many reasons why newer, more valuable medicines tend to be more expensive. The proper use of those medicines keep people out of the hospital. Yeah. They keep people back to work. They, they essentially avoid a lot of other costs and a lot of other suffering. So I think that's, that's important to understand. Here's Kevin Kelly. Hey, John, thanks for joining us. My main question is, you had brought up that operating costs have come down. How important are partnerships with other firms like Astra when you are doing an immuno-oncology drug right. partnership with them? How important is that in driving costs down as well as feeding the pipeline? Well, it's a very good question. I, I happen to think it, it's, it's one, as, one important aspect of keeping our costs down. We announced this new expanded partnership this morning with AstraZeneca, but keep in mind in 2011 we announced an even bigger partnership with Beringer Ingelheim that enabled both companies to access diabetes medicines in each other's pipeline at the time. I think from a shareholder perspective, this is a much friendlier, or less expensive way of essentially uh, enabling, in this case, both companies to bring new medicines to market. So you can expect Lilly's going to continue to look for partnerships. We're also going to continue to do more earlier stage deals, earlier in our pipeline. Here's John Bussey from The Journal, John. Uh, John, we had uh, Andrew Liveris on a little bit earlier, uh, and he characterized his business rather positively as operating in a global environment of recovering economies. 
Uh, you have uh, operations around the world. I know foreign exchange has negatively impacted you. Take that out of the mix. How's your demand globally looking? Well, I think it's mixed right now. I mean, we're challenged uh, in Europe. Uh, we're challenged with uh, 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 access uh, issues in many countries, with pricing uh, issues uh, in many countries. Uh, Asia has been a bright spot for us. Japan in particular, we really lead the market there in, in growth. Uh, China is in a little bit of a reset mode uh, based on a number of health care reforms that they've introduced there in, in recent years. Uh, I remain bullish about Latin America despite uh, individual country differences there. And the U.S. market uh, for our business remains uh, rather strong. So it's a bit mixed, but uh, you know, we're cautiously optimistic uh, about the future in terms of those global dynamics. John, good to have you on the program. Thanks so much. Thanks, Maria. Thank we'll see you, you soon. John Lecklider okay. there. Eli Lilly. We'll be right back.